Hello, I'm Jeffrey Mishlove. I'm going to chat with you a bit today about humanistic psychology. You know, uh, for a period of time, I was the vice president of the Association for Humanistic Psychology. And it's an organization that has a very proud history. It was founded by some of the greats in the field of psychology, Abraham Maslow, of whom I've spoken before in previous in present segments. He's the author of a wonderful book that had a, an enormous influence on me when I was an undergraduate in college toward a psychology of being. He's the one who basically uh, came to understand as he studied the most creative people that he could find that they had mystical experiences or experiences he called peak experiences, which were essentially indistinguishable from mystical experiences, and that these experiences, and we're talking about people like Einstein, Helen Keller, uh, these experiences were core to their identity, to their work in the world. Then there was Carl Rogers, who was the founder of uh, what's known as client-centered therapy. <laughs> and uh, humanistic psychology has kind of uh, fallen uh, by the wayside in the sense that uh, it's not so popular now. Back in the 1970s, it was really a, uh, an essential movement. It was at the core of what you could think of as the human potential movement. But psychology today, to the best of my understanding, has drifted away towards things like uh, cognitive uh, behavioral therapy and uh, computer models of human consciousness. But at the time, it was considered what they called a third force in psychology, the first two forces being uh, behaviorism and Freudian psychology or the psychology of the unconscious. Um, humanistic psychology tended to just focus on the human being as human being. Now, interestingly, when I was a student at Berkeley, uh, we had a lecture by B.F. Skinner, the founder, or not really the founder, but one, one of the leading, leading figures in the behaviorist psychology movement. And I remember at the time it was striking because he said proudly he was a humanist, but he, then he said, not those terrible people involved in humanistic psychology. Oh, no, no. There is another humanist association, the American Humanist Association. Well, basically, the American Humanist Association, with which Skinner identified himself, is a group of atheists. Not only atheists, but communist atheists. Uh, and uh, I have nothing against communist atheists, but I will say this, they uh, out of that American Humanist Association came the philosopher Paul Kurtz, who was the founder of an organization known as PSYCOP, C-S-I-C-O-P, the Committee for the Scientific Investigation of the Claims of the Paranormal. Well, for one thing, to my knowledge, they've almost never conducted any real scientific investigations. The one investigation that they did conduct, of which I am aware, became a scandal because it ended up supporting the claims of Michel Guacolin um, as regards astrology. These people, I used to call them the debunkers, like Archie Debunker, but Stanley Krippner, uh, whom I interviewed about the skeptics of parapsychology, told me, you shouldn't call them debunkers, he said, because the very word debunk assumes that there's something that needs to be bunked or debunked, that there's bunk that needs to be debunked. <laughs> he said they should just be called scoffers because they're they're not interested in whether it's bunk or not. They're, as far as they're concerned, they've already made up their minds. And why? Because for some reason, atheists tend to be suspicious of parapsychology. They assume that 
Anyone who accepts the existence of ESP or psychokinesis must therefore be a, a theist of some sort, believe that these are gifts of the spirit or associated with religious and spiritual traditions. And of course, throughout history, psychic phenomena has been associated with every spiritual tradition going back to animism, shamanism, Taoism, Hinduism, Buddhism, uh, early Christianity, Judaism, Islam. They all have legends of saints and mystics and people who have uh, powers of the spirit. Now, this also became a uh, fact that was noticed by Abraham Maslow and Carl Rogers and the other early founders of the Association for Humanistic Psychology. And they thought, you know, we need to have a psychological understanding of these matters of the human psyche, the human consciousness, the human mind that have been up until then really primarily, almost entirely in the domain of religions or sometimes popular modern movements like silver mind control or um, things of that sort. But they realized that this was taking things a step beyond the um, province of the Association for Humanistic Psychology. Although I can tell you this, the Association for Humanistic Psychology, to my knowledge, has always been open to spiritual experience and the paranormal. Nevertheless, the founders of the AHP, Association for Humanistic Psychology, set up a second organization, the Association for Transpersonal Psychology. And that association was specifically designed to understand, to experiment with, to research, and to help cultivate a psychological understanding of experiences that go beyond the personal. Transpersonal means, in, in effect, experiences of consciousness outside of the brain, <laughs> spiritual experiences, psychic experiences, things that cannot be explained simply in terms of our personal individual consciousness. And that society uh, has flourished uh, as well, although it never quite made the mainstream. In fact, there was a movement uh, when the Association for Transpersonal Psychology wanted to set up a separate division within the American Psychological Association. There was a movement to stop it, a movement led ironically by Rollo May, a great existential psychologist whom I've interviewed and whom I greatly admire, but I um, disagreed with him in terms of his opposition to transpersonal psychology. Now, Rollo May himself was a great humanistic psychologist as well as existential psychologist. He's written uh, wonderful books on um, the human will. I remember reading his, his great masterpiece. I'm showing the cover of it right now. And when I finished that book, I was in tears. It was so powerful. And Rollo May himself, I can say, had great sympathy for mysticism. He, he was particularly interested in, in the uh, German mystic Jakob Boima. Anyway, he stood against. He wrote a very passionate editorial in the Board of Regents of the American Psychological Association refused to set up a separate division of transpersonal psychology because Rollo May argued they're not practicing psychology, they're practicing religion under the guise of psychology. Well, that's kind of been the roadblock. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, these areas, religion, psychology, they bleed into each other. They have leaky margins to some extent. In, in fact, all of the humanistic disciplines, the humanities, whether it's philosophy or literature or poetry, they, they all kind of bleed into each other, really. Uh, nevertheless, 
uh, these are very important cultural movements and uh, I wanted to share them with you because it, there's a sense in which they're being forgotten these days. Abraham Maslow, Carl Rogers, V.F. Skinner, um, well, they're all dead, frankly, and, and perhaps uh, becoming somewhat forgotten. But I, I wanted to share my memories of these people with you because for me, they're still very vital. And I hope that you can feel that vitality and have a little taste of that history. Thank you for being with me.